Okay, well, uh, thanks for staying. Okay, so thanks for staying and not going to lunch. It was quite uh, by disheartening to see people leaving, but to be honest, I also would have preferred to get to burritos and seeing my own talk. Um, I'm here today to talk about diversity team in your community and then what? That's a title that I found uh, under the shower and pressure. I had other one. I would appreciate to not take too much picture of me. Uh, my name is Michael Scherer. I'm working in the Red Hat Open Source Program Office. I'm a system administrator and shit, now the pop-up for the Wi-Fi coming. Um, right. yeah. And the original title of that talk was Protest What a Concept. I'm also French, so I decided to speak about our national sport during protest. And it was planned to be given to my team, um, but I never managed to organize myself to do that, so I decided to take her to come to Bruno. And in case I decide to write a book, that's the real uh, topic I'm going to speak about. I had a lot of complicated work just to sound smart. So to explain what it's about, I need to give my own theory on diversity in open source. And my example is based on what I call the MCU, not the Disney one, because then I'm going to get sued. It's the Michael Communities Universe. All the community are usually participate as part of our open source program office. So when we come to diversity, usually we just start with phase one. It's mostly just guys and dudes doing stuff. And they see that there is a diversity problem, an obvious one. So we go to phase two. We decide that, yeah, women also exist. And we need to get them to join our community. So for example, things like uh, Debian women, Linux chicks, etc., etc. And after that, you go to phase three. And phase three is you get more minority, like we decide that there is more axis of diversity, and usually the team change their name. So, for example, at Fedora, first, nothing special. I mean, it's not like it was bad, it's just that nothing was organized before 2015, and people decide to say, yeah, we need to do something, so they create the Fedora Women's Day, FWD, and one year after, and they start to say, yeah, it's good, but uh, we need to do something else, so they rename, Federal Week of Diversity. You can see the perfect trick to not change the acronym anywhere. And then phase four, um, well, everything is in the title. Phase four is basically civil war. That's the difference between CU where the it's during phase three. And so people are not fighting. So for that, I have two case study on how it evolved. The first one is on uh, well-known player versus player MMORPG, also called Wikipedia. So um, I decided to focus everything on the LGBTQ community because that's for months and because that's all the example I have, but uh, just keep that in mind uh, that it's very specific. So in 2006, the first group on English Wikipedia related to edition of LGBTQ related topic is created. Nothing happened, it's like not formalized yet. It's at the start of Wikipedia after four years. In 2008, uh, they decided to organize Wikimania, which is a big Wikipedia conference in Egypt. So that was before the Arab Spring. Hosni uh, Mubarak was still a dictator. Now they changed dictator from what I know. So situation was not great for gay folks, like torture, this kind of stuff. People start to protest, but not much. Four years later, they decided to do a meetup on another Wikimania. This one, it was in Washington, D.C., so much less problematic. Deciding to see that there is not much diversity, uh, the foundation decided to create a diversity team and a conference, which resulted in a LGBT plus user group. So I'm not going to explain everything related to the structure of Wikimedia. It's like you take the way the Dodge of Venice was elected uh, five centuries ago, and it's more complicated. And then again, another controversy appeared for the North Carolina bathroom bill related to some event. And then uh, there was more reaction because more people joined due to the previous diversity work. And people start to discuss about, yeah, what do we do if there is law, but it's not on force and this kind of stuff. 
Then again, the foundation decided to do a meeting in Tunisia. And that one is pretty interesting because at least one of their employees decided to not go because uh, he didn't feel safe. He moved from Iran to Berlin and he said, yeah, I don't think I should get there because I like Jews and it's not cool. And the fun fact is it was organized by a bisexual guy in Tunisia. So he knew on the ground what it was about, but uh, yet from a purely, um, well, it was not good optics. And again, they decided to organize Wikimania in Singapore. Just at that time, uh, it was still illegal to be homosexual in Singapore. It was not on force. So the whole group decided to start to organize and ask questions like, what happens if I decide to protest and I go sent to jail? Are you going to pay for my lawyer and this kind of stuff? And yeah, the law changed before uh, the event, which is this summer. But uh, you can see the rise from nobody cares when we send an to we start to be organized and we are asking for protection and this kind of thing. The second case study is OpenStreetMap. This one is a much better story. So OpenStreetMap is much smaller than the Wikimedia Foundation. 2012, they had their first paper on you are not diverse. Usually when you have always like sociology that look at it, people start to take it seriously because we cannot listen to women when they say there is a problem. We need to have a paper, peer review, etc., etc. Three years later, they say, oh, how can we improve things? They decided to create Geochicas, uh, which is a group of uh, women who decided to, again, do some uh, grouping for diversity. Later, people start to add a group to tag on the map various LGBT topics. That results in the creation of a group uh, specifically dedicated to that on Telegram. Later, they managed to get a safety policy. So the safety policy says that if we do an event somewhere and it's not safe from the law perspective, we need to do something somewhere else. For example, a stat state of the map, which is a big event of OpenStreetMap in 2003. So this summer was canceled because one bid was Paris and the French did what they do well, which is abandon and go home. Then it was in Kosovo or in Cameroon. And I do not remember the reason why they didn't choose Kosovo, but for Cameroon it was like, yeah, on Wikipedia it's written that it's not cool for lesbian and gay, etc. Well, maybe we should apply your policy. And they said, yeah, okay, we are going to cancel and we will see everything online and see what happens later. And so that kind of example of people protesting for diversity, but I have plenty of them, like GitHub and Microsoft and IC boycott in 2020. Fedora had a Black Lives Matter ticket for two years, deciding whether there was a banner or not. And in the end, they say, oh, it was too late, the moment passed. And it's even happening, well, last year, because again, that recycled slide. So for example, in March 22, the Linux Foundation decided to organize an event in Texas. It was already organized before. Uh, so they signed the contract, and Texas did something shitty with abortion or something like this. So it's so much stuff happening that I didn't, I do not remember. So people started to protest on Twitter. Then in summer 22, people started to protest again Cloudflare and KiwiFarm. I kind of work on that as a sysadmin to see what will happen when it escalates and people start to say, yeah, we need to stop using Cloudflare, etc., etc." So it was easy, we didn't choose, but uh, yeah. Even this week or this morning, I've seen this on Hacker News and people discussing on whether we need to do event on for computer science in Florida. So yeah, you can see that the rate of protest is increasing and it's all related to diversity. So as a community manager or someone who cares about diversity, how do you handle that? That's where my talk was supposed to end for my coworker and let them debate. It didn't happen, so I have to invent some answer. So the first one is let's start by saying, yeah, we are doing free software, but we are not doing politics. That never go well. For a start, free software is politics. And for a second, saying no politics is a political act. So just stop that. It's not going to work at all. Well, you need to have process in advance. That's much better usually. So the example I gave for Fedora, it was mostly because they never decided on how you write a letter or not, what is the process? So they have to decide the process, make meeting. Once you have the process and you follow the process and it took six months, so it was too late. And it's not the first time it happened. It happened all the time on 
the Wikipedia community for FESTA, SESTA, some US law, they decided whether the websites need to go dark or not, something like with the current credit strike. So decide in advance so you can be able to do things uh, while in time and do not just lag. For events, try to get feedback uh, as early as possible. Like, even if you decide to do something in Texas, well, at least you listen to people and you say, look, it's either Texas or we do nothing. So what do we do? Well, we go for Texas and we try to get uh, another solution. And also, well, try to decide the difficult question in advance. So you can see that all the examples I gave were kind of related to the US because I mostly work with the US-based community. But, uh, well, there is other countries than the US. I mean, I know it surprised sometimes my coworker, but for example, the Black Lives Matter ticket I spoke, it was to George Floyd murder and the protest. It turned out there is the same exact kind of issue in Switzerland at the moment with a guy named Mike Ben Peter who died four years ago. And right now there is protest in Lausanne for that. Um, nobody ever speak, for example, about Roma discrimination, where it's a big topic for the European Union. I guess all the issue with class in India, it's also something that we do not speak about. So try to make sure that you are not only discussing about US stuff, but also, well, there is so much that we can do and we can discuss. And also, well, be prepared for bad face actor. Uh, this is recorded, so I'm not going to give name, but my coworker likely can see who I'm speaking about. There is plenty of folks who will uh, call, for example, feminism language or try to appear be progressive and just do shit. So you cannot just, you cannot, you need to be prepared. And that's basically it. I don't know if I have questions, but um, since it's a lightning talk, I think I know that. So if you want to contact me, I'm not on social media, except on Mastodon. And I have another talk in uh, 20 minutes on that. But you can send me an email, you can ping me on RC, or you can see me around trying to discuss with people if you have any questions, remarks, or anything like this. So thanks for listening, and all right, that's it. <laughs>